What's up guys, today we are going to make a terrarium for the tiniest scorpion I've ever seen in my life. This guy I've decided to call Eugene and look how cute he is. Right, let's make him a terrarium. This is the container that I'll be using. It's not airtight and that's perfect because the scorpion's going to need some airflow. This is the medium that Eugene came in. It's a mix of leaf litter and coir. To that, I'll be adding more coir, which will become the main body of the medium. Here's some zeolite, which is a new material that my friends over at Soil Ninja have recommended. I'll leave a product link in the description. My trusty worm castings for nutrition. And because this terrarium is bioactive, I'm adding a healthy amount of leaf litter, which is going to break down slowly and act as a food source for the springtails. Once that's all in, I give the components a thorough mix. I like this container a lot because it's sleek and minimal looking. I add a healthy amount of substrate into it and arrange it so it's slightly higher at the back and lower at the front. Now I've opted against using a drainage layer as I think they take up prime aesthetic real estate in the container and in smaller builds they're not a necessity. Watering correctly pretty much negates the need for a false bottom, especially in small terrariums. I have to give Micro Exotics a shout out here because the Pygmy Wood Scorpion going in today was gifted to me by them, so check those guys out. The website's in the description. Anyway, back to the build. I'm using cork bark pieces which will give Eugene plenty of places to hide. <laughs> oh man, to be a micro scorpion in a terrarium. Plant wise, I'm going to keep things mega simple here and use a Nephrolepis XL Tartar Fern. The larger leaves do need trimming down though to help it fit. And as it grows inside the terrarium, I'll prune when needs be. Before the fern goes in, I like to loosen the root ball as this helps the roots find their way into the new substrate. I make a hole for the fern and gently place it inside. Here are two pieces of unidentified moss that my friends from Moss Click sent me. The scorpion likes 70% plus humidity and this moss will help with that. I like mosses a lot and they always take centre stage in any terrariums that I make. By adding the moss at the front of the terrarium, we can use it to its full effect while being economical with it. After all, moss is expensive. I mentioned earlier that I added leaf litter because this terrarium is bioactive, and on a walk today, I found this piece of pine bark, which will be a great addition to the scene. I shan't add it whole though, rather, I'll break it into smaller pieces and use it to cover any open areas of substrate. Breaking it down will also quicken the decomposition time. These next two plants are fairly common, but that doesn't mean they can't be used effectively. By taking rootless cuttings, I ensure the plants stay smaller for longer while establishing a root system. The cuttings are small and they look good in the terrarium, and this is a preferable method of planting in a terrarium of this size. Terrariums can have mold outbreaks, so we need a cleanup crew, and these orange springtails will do just the trick. Think of them as the janitors of the terrarium. Janitors that will also become an occasional meal to the scorpion. Now speaking of the scorpion, I still can't get over just how small Eugene is. Scorpions can be elusive though, and something tells me Eugene is going to be hard to spot. Having said that, I squished a fungus gnat earlier and tried to tempt him with it, but apparently he doesn't like gnats. Instead, I'll feed him a variety of foods like fruit flies, mealworms and the occasional isopod. So Eugene's home is complete. If you have any questions then feel free to add them in the comment section, or better yet, join my Facebook group, the link is in the description below. As always, it's been a pleasure to have you here with me, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye from myself and Yuji.